Howdy y'all, and welcome back for another great workout. Corey Lewis here from Extra Mile Fitness, and I'm joined by Coach Krista and Coach A, who will be doing the workout for you to follow along with. So, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a short little warm up, because we have about a 30 minute workout for you that's gonna be broken up into eight minute segments. So, let's get after it. What we're gonna start with is what we call our couch stretch. So, Coach Krista and Coach A, we're gonna get into it. They're doing it off a bench. It got its name because you can do it off a couch or off the wall. But what it is, is we're gonna get our knee as far back against the wall as we can. If we're on a wall, it should be touching. But for a bench or a couch, get it back as far as you can go. And then, they're bringing their opposite foot up. Now you notice they're both sitting tall. I'm gonna have Coach Abe drop down a little bit. A lot of us are only gonna get to this position. That's okay. I want us to keep our knee close, get to this position first, and then if we can sit up, we can sit up like they were doing a second ago. And all you're gonna do from here, if you notice, if you check in, your butt is close to your foot, I want you to squeeze your biscuits as tight as you can and try to create a gap between your butt and your foot and hold for me. They're smiling, hopefully you're smiling at home also. We're gonna hold that for about five to 10. They're gonna relax back. And then give me one more biscuit squeeze with the hips forward. Awesome. And then we're going to go ahead and dismount out of that. And we're going to go with our left leg. So as you probably felt there, what we're hitting is that upper hip region, our hip flexors, which gets so tight from all the sitting that we do. Uh, the hips are a big focus of ours because if they're tight, it's going to really put strain on that low back causing low back pain over time. So now they're with their left leg. They're gonna do the same thing here. Sit as tall as you can. Notice Coach Amy down a little bit, the side's a little tighter on him. We're gonna do the same thing. Even if you're bent down, we're still squeezing the biscuits, pressing their hips forward. And we're gonna do this for about 30 seconds, enough time to get two to three hip uh, press forwards in. And this is a great stretch to do, ideally, in a perfect world if you could, for about two minutes every day. If you're really in pain right now, this is something that would benefit you greatly to add into your daily routine. Give yourself four minutes to really work on improving your health. This is a great way to do it. Two minutes each leg, do that for a month, and I guarantee you're gonna start seeing some great progress and feeling better. Awesome, so after that, we're gonna dismount out of that, where they're gonna move into our downward dog in the world's grade. So make sure you don't have anything in the way. And what they're gonna do here is just get to a push-up position. They're gonna pipe their hips, dropping both heels to the floor, and then they'll bring their foot up. And just like we've done in the past, that elbow's gonna drop as close to the floor as it can. They're gonna rotate that hand to the sky. The thing I want you to focus on here is when that foot comes up by the hand, that it's completely flat on the floor. And then the second thing to focus on is that that elbow is touching the inside of that foot. A lot of us will be able to cheat a little bit and put that elbow further from the foot and get it closer to the floor. We're losing the benefit of that stretch. Keep it close to the foot, even if that means we're not getting very close to the floor, that's it. It'll get better over time, and it'll be well worth fighting it now to open up those hips. Awesome, I'm gonna give us about 10 more seconds here. And with any of these stretches, if you're feeling really tighten them at home. You know, even when we move on, spend some extra time, you can always catch up later with these warm-ups. Awesome, and now what I'm gonna have these athletes do is drop into our pigeon stretch. So they'll go back to that down dog position. This is an easy way to get into it. They're gonna kick their leg up in the air, and then they're gonna swoop it forward. On this, what we're shooting for is to get our front leg at a 90 degree angle, and if you notice here, Coach Abe's a little tight. What we're gonna do is just slide a little cushion under there. If you're at home, a pillow. That way we're not putting added strain on that knee. If you're pretty flexible on the hips like Coach Krista, that knee can drop to the floor. But I want you to check in here that the leg is at a 90 degree angle. Then, they're just gonna sit nice and tall, dropping the hips to the floor. You should feel it in that back uh, booty area right now. What they're gonna do now is squeeze their biscuits tight for them. Now, as you relax your biscuits, I want you to rotate your body 
trying to point your belly button at your knee. So you kind of walk those hands, really walk them around the leg. We're winding up that hip. Uh, it should feel maybe the stretch in a little different area here. Awesome. Now what they're going to do is walk their hand back to the middle, plant their hands, kick their foot back into that down dog position. If you want to do a few foot pedals here, you can. And then we're going to bring that other leg up for the pigeon stretch. Awesome. So we're going to do the same thing here. You might notice you're tighter on one side than the other. That's not uncommon. That's pretty common for most of us. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> like, just like the couch stretch, if this is something that's extremely tight on us, which is common for probably 75 to 80% of us, spend some time in this each day. I guarantee you, if you, just like the couch stretch, if you did this one for two minutes each side each day for a month, you're going to feel a world of difference at the end of that month. Wouldn't even hurt, especially if we deal with a lot of low back pain, to do this one and the couch. It's only eight minutes of your life. It's a good investment in yourself. So they're going to do the same thing here. Let's squeeze our biscuits. Now let's relax our biscuits and walk belly button over knee. Awesome. Then we'll go hands back to the middle. And we're just going to finish out by kicking back into that down dog and then come to standing. Awesome, now we're just gonna move into our Samson stretch. So they'll interlock their fingers. They're gonna go out into a larger than a lunge position. So if you've never done this before, we're looking for the back leg to be straight or almost straight. They're gonna reach their palms to the sky, pressing that hip towards the floor. And we're gonna spend about 30 seconds here, so don't hold too long. Hold for about three to five each leg, so that way we get to visit each leg two or three times during this 30 seconds. Awesome, we're gonna go for about 10 more seconds here, so I find each leg twice, or each leg one more time, two more total. Awesome. Beautiful, now this next one will be different for most of us, probably something new for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be in a standing position, and all I want us to do is take our right foot and put it right in front of the left foot. And then what you're gonna see them do is they're gonna bend their right knee and bear hug it with their upper body. So the knee is bent significantly here. The goal here is that their chest is touching the floor or touching their leg. That's the focus for this stretch. So they're gonna bear hug it. Now, what I want you to do is keep your chest touching the front of your leg and try to straighten that leg and just hold for them. If you notice their leg isn't straight, that's going to be completely normal. Some of us might have a significant bend. That's okay. Good. You guys can bend it and do it again. Once you straighten it, just hold for about five to ten seconds. What we're doing here, by connecting the chest to the leg, we're putting our hamstring at full stretch. Then we're trying to straighten the leg to truly put it at the full stretch that it can be. So this is a great stretch for us if those hamstrings are tight. Uh, which all of us could benefit from this one, even if we have pretty flexible hamstrings. Awesome, let's go ahead and switch legs. One thing to focus on as we're doing this is when you straighten that leg, think about pushing your hips towards the sky. That's gonna give it a little more stretch. Make sure we're really focusing in on that hamstring. We're not kind of cheating and pushing the butt towards the wall behind. what we call an AMRAP. An AMRAP means as many rounds as possible. 
The time is eight minutes in this case. So they're gonna work hard for eight minutes. Then they're gonna take a two minute breather where they can get a drink, bring their heart rate down, where they'll do another eight minute AMRAP of different movements, where they'll then take a two minute breather, and then they'll finish with eight minute AMRAP. So, you two ready to hit it? Awesome. So, they're gonna begin the first eight minute AMRAP here in three, two, one, and go. So they are gonna do 20 lunges to start this workout. If you notice, when they step out, their front foot is flat on the ground, and they're just dropping their back knee to kiss the ground. If we need to modify this, we cannot drop our knee quite so low. Another option, say that's still a little difficult for us, stand next to a pole or a box or a counter and gently use that to help assist you to stand. That'll help with that balancing component if that's the big thing that we're fighting with these lunges. Awesome, and again, they're doing 20 lunges here. Then when they complete those 20, they're gonna lay down and perform 10 leg raises. Now with this, it could really be any core movement. Notice they have their hands under their butts to help with keeping that low back flat. But if you are at a gym or you're familiar with CrossFit and you want to do toe to bar or knees to elbows, uh, if you don't, you know, maybe leg raises are a challenge, we can bend the knees for us and pull the knees to the chest. We can also perform a sit. Again, it's your journey. Pick what's going to challenge you, what you're going to have fun with, and what's going to allow you to keep moving. After they do their 10 leg raises, they're going to go to a 10 wide stance deadlift. So this is going to focus on the groins a little bit more when we're doing it. But their feet are going to be wide, toes are going to turn out. They're just bending at the waist, keeping that back nice and flat. Notice their knees are pushing out over their toes. So if you check your knees when you're doing this and they're pushing inside of your foot, bring those feet in a little closer. And the big focus for this is that those backs are staying nice and flat as we move through. Awesome. So they would repeat that for eight minutes. Right now we're just going to have them do one, but when you're doing this at home, push that hard for eight minutes. My goal for you is to complete that three to five, maybe even six times if we're really feeling it. So that eight minutes ends, you'll check your clock, you're going to rest for two minutes, where we move into the second eight minute amp. And so they're going to begin their second round in three, Two, one, go. What this looks like is it's 20 lateral lunges. With this, you're gonna dictate the movement and the intensity of the movement. If you notice when Coach Krista does it, she's dropping her hips a little lower. Coach Abe's keeping the hips a little higher. Again, it comes down to quality movement. I would rather see us keep the hips a little higher, eventually work our way down when mobility improves than sacrifice technique to get down. The big thing we're looking for is the knee that's bending should be tracking right over your toes. That front foot that you're bending to should also be staying flat on the ground as they move through this. Then we keep that chest nice and tall as those hips push back and down. Once they complete 20 of those, and to the right would be one, to the left would be two. They're gonna lay on their back and perform 40 pingmans. So we're always trying to work and get ready for speedo season. What they're gonna do is they'll have their feet down. They're just gonna rotate, reaching towards those toes. So they're pulling their rib cage into their stomach, shoulders are off the ground. And it's just a rotational movement, working on those obliques a little bit for us. So each time they touch a foot would be one rep. And we're gonna do 40 of those. Then after 40 of those, they'll stand up and you'll need your kettlebell or dumbbell again. And they're gonna do 10 Russian swings. So if you're new to kettlebell swings, the Russian swing means we're just going to the eye. So it's a big hip pop and the kettlebell floats to the eye. The big things to focus on here, the heels are staying flat on the ground. You're pushing through those as you straighten the hips and knees as fast as you can. After 10 of those, they would have completed a round of that. Again, our goal for you, our challenge to you, is three to five, maybe even six rounds on this one as well. It all depends on how we're moving, but remember, quality movement is more important than sacrificing to go a little faster. 
So they would rest two minutes again, bring that heart rate down, get a drink. And then the grand finale for our third eight minute amp rep. That's they're gonna begin in three, two, one, and go. So we're building off what we've done before. Now we're gonna go jumping lunges here. So it's the same movement pattern as the lunges we did earlier on in this workout. But now when they switch their legs, they're just gonna jump off the ground, adding in a little dynamic move. Now for this, to modify it, we'll just go back to those lunges without the jump. It'll be a little less strenuous on the body. We could always do the other modifications as well. So once they complete 20 of those, they're gonna go down into a plank and perform what we call a super plank. So they'll start on their hands, they'll lower to their elbows, and then back up. That would be a rep. They're gonna do 10 of those. The big focus here, we wanna squeeze our biscuits so we don't wag our tail. Our hips shouldn't be moving side to side much. The goal is how flat can we stay? You'll also notice their shoulder is staying right over their wrist as they come back up. Make sure we're not drifting back as we move through this. After 10 of those, they're gonna go back to their kettlebell where they'll perform 10 kettlebell swings. So we're taking that Russian swing from the last workout. Now we're gonna give it a little more of a hip hop with a pull at the top and they're gonna finish with kettlebell overhead. The big thing I'm looking for here is that they're standing up fast, finishing with the nice uh, rib cage pulled down, belly's nice and tight, kettlebells locked down overhead. Now, if we've never gone overhead and that's a little bit out of our range for this workout today, just stick with those Russian swings, you're still gonna get in a great workout. Awesome, so they just completed round one. Again, our goal for you is three to five, Maybe even that sixth round if you're feeling really good. This is the last AMRAP, so sell out, empty the gas tank, really push it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to message us on Instagram or Facebook at Extra Mile Fitness. You can also visit our website at xm.fitness where you can message us, email us. We're always here to help you. We want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your fitness journey and anything we can do to help, we're glad to do. So until next time, stay safe, stay active. Let's keep living a healthy life.